Hey everybody, this is Sean from Save Monk Outdoors um, and today I want to explore the five C's of ancient monks. This is a part one in a series uh, that I will be doing and that I've been researching um, uh, about the various accoutrements that certain ancient characters uh, throughout the East uh, may have carried. Um, Dave Canterbury, of course, as we all know, is uh, well known for outlining a, what I call a systemic typology of um, survival basics or items that are necessary for survival. And he has traced historically, uh, looking at archaeological evidence um, of O.C. the Iceman some thousands of years ago, I believe four to five thousand years ago, <clears throat> and also up to Daniel Boone and looking at the various uh, uh, American pioneers, um, Horace Kephart, Nesmuk, <clears throat> and uh, various other um, Hudson Bay trappers up to the 19th century frontiersmen. Um, I also saw from Pathfinder TV that um, there were some lectures about 10th century Vikings on the five seas and some uh, other gentlemen exploring that kind of uh, that kind of world with the five seas. Uh, the five seas survivability, as everybody knows, <clears throat> are the five main items or accoutrements that are most difficult to reproduce in the wild um, and allow one uh, a great versatility to cover the basic needs of you know, uh, core body temperature control, of thermoregulating, and of creating tools, implements, and uh, uh, aiding in survival and or uh, facilitating a ex extended periods of time in the in the wilderness. <clears throat> now, uh, uh, understanding this, um, it just got me sort of stimulated to think. Uh, I was. Uh, when I was in the School of Divinity, at, um, and and um, I studied comparative uh, religion at uh, at the Harvard Divinity School, and um, uh, one thing uh, I could recommend is to look at the uh, videos produced by uh, Pastor Jason Hunt on the five C's of biblical figures, um, and he's done a biblical study on that. I, I'd like to maybe go do something uh, similar to that, exploring various biblical figures uh, who have, who, who may have held the, or carried the five C's or how the five C's would look in that uh, setting. Um, because I had spent so much time in Buddhism um, and almost a decade um, training and uh, practicing Buddhism, um, uh, it's always, uh, from a young age, I've always been fascinated by Shaolin monks and monks in general. But I want to look at something that maybe is not necessarily looked at, and that is look at the traditional allotted items that Buddhist monks are, are allowed to carry, uh, coming from um, their own monastic uh, codes. <clears throat> and, uh, one, and one question I had was, are the five C's there within uh, the kit of the Buddhist monk. All right, so here are the, um, here is the haversack, the monk bag, um, filled with the eight items. And I have them here, wrapped up in a, a little bag here. And this was of course one of the items. So traditionally the, the Eight items that were allotted, um, that were allowed for monks to carry, were the covering elements. So the robe, the robe here, two robes uh, that they were allowed to carry, uh, and that I'm of course using for thermal regulation. Check out my video on that. <laughs> um, the two two robes. You also had in one of the items. Um, one of the items 
a cutting tool or a razor blade that was used to shave the head and uh, used for hygiene and of course could be used in emergency situations for other things like uh, helping constructing shelters, uh, starting fires, etc. You had a sewing kit and this is just simply um, a needle stuck in a bamboo nodule in some lamb's wool. So you had a sewing kit that was also allowed, two robes, cutting tool, sewing kit. You also had thread, which was also allowed. You also had what is known as an alms bowl or a begging bowl. And this bowl was uh, uh, tr probably traditionally in many different uh, um, materials. It could be a gourd. Um, it also uh, could be iron. It could be copper. Um, this one, I believe, is a type of st a steel. Um, this was also used for, <clears throat> you know, like ritual purposes, like this was a bell, things like that. Uh, but but also it was used on the what are known as the the begging rounds, where monks would go and and ask for food uh, to support their practice. <clears throat> so of course there you go. You have a bowl, and you have a cloth. Uh, that was used as a water filter. Here I just have a modern sort of a black shamog, but uh, for all intents and purposes it would be something like this, probably of this nature it would be made organically, especially when we're talking about ancient monks. <clears throat> it would probably be an organic material just like this, cotton, uh, etc. And so here you have in the monks uh, basic eight kits you have here, uh, you have a covering with the, with the cloth, the water filter, the water filter were used to not only uh, filter out fine particulates, but because uh, Buddhist monks were not allowed to kill even uh, uh, animals <coughs> um, or intentionally kill them, uh, then they would try to filter out uh, different types of, uh, you know, uh, uh, animals or whatever they are inside the water before they drank it, you know. So that's the philosophy. This is not a religious video or anything like that. I will not comment on any of those kind of things. <clears throat> okay. Um, and you have the razor blade. So that would be 1C, a cutting tool. You have the container here, the begging bowl, which also be used to boil water and disinfect water because especially if it was made out of metal. Even if it was made out of organic material, you could still use uh, linings uh, of fir trees or different types of organic material and then rock boil in them. And then of course you have cordage. So you have covering, cutting tool, cordage, covering, cutting tool, right, cordage, and container. And my question was, what about the combustion device? Uh, uh, what about the combustion device? Did they have combustion elements within their kit? Um, not within the traditional kit that is allotted to them. Okay, this is the traditional kit that's allowed, allotted to them. So it is not explicitly mentioned in ancient text about having a combustion, combustion device. However, according to archaeological research, and we have documented research even in various museums in the United States in Buddhist culture, in Buddhist art. Uh, we have uh, documentation and archaeological evidence of, of flint and steel, here we go, flint and steel, type of flint and steel being used uh, in some type of tin like this. And uh, in Tibet they would be, this kind of tin would be called a chukmuk tin. And a steel could be inside uh, as, uh, as well as different types of flint and or limestone uh, or, or uh, harder rocks that could be used to uh, strike fire with. So we also have archaeological evidence that although these are not prescribed within the original um, prescriptions of what a monk may uh, carry, we have historical evidence that, that, um, that these items uh, were carried by certain monks. Um, and so it's highly likely that um, if monks were uh, traveling in inclement temperatures or seasons, uh, that they would carry <clears throat> such a device uh, as flint and steel. We know, of course, that the Iron Age is from 1200 BC, um, and that is well beyond be, uh, before the period that Buddhism actually is begun. So the iron and steel technology was available to them, <clears throat> and we have, of course, archaeological evidence showing that within uh, the kits of some Buddhist monks that they did, in fact, they did, did in fact carry uh, flint and steel. Antonio Andrade, Catholic missionaries that had traveled to, to even Tibet, uh, finding that the chukmuks were everywhere. Uh, 1800s, uh, William Moorcroft um, commenting that all 
Tibetans would carry a knife on their hip and a chuck muck or a flint steel kit uh, for creating fire. So we know that the five C's are also uh, were essential in Eastern cultures as well. And we know that these, these were traded quite openly and quite uh, uh, readily throughout the Silk Road and the various trade posts that existed in that ancient world. So it's highly likely that uh, because all of this falls within the, pay, the, the, the period of the Iron Age, that uh, early Buddhist monks, uh, ancient ascetic monks, uh, <clears throat> also uh, within their kits had that fifth item or the fifth C available to them. So they not only had the cutting tool, which was the razor blade to shave the head, to protect from hygiene, uh, unlike other, other types of uh, uh, Indian yogis and ascetics who would grow their bears along and they'd grow kind of dreadlocks. Buddhist monks were, or, uh, were, uh, 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 were ordered to uh, cut their hair by, by Buddha, and um, for hygiene purposes primarily. <clears throat> um, so they have, we, had, we have the cutting tool within that kit, or we have that razor blade, and um, there are various shapes of that razor blade. In Japan it's known as the kamisori, and um, probably transported from Korea about 1300 years ago through with, with, by Buddhist monks uh, to Japan, and that is a shaving implement. It has a sort of a scandy grind on one side. It's like, it kind of looks like this in terms of the blade edge profile. It's like a scandy grind on one side, and the this side is kind of flat, but it's a little bit of a hollow grind on some blades, and this side would be like a scandy grind. So it's, like a, it's not a double scandy, it's like a one-sided scandy, and uh, would have uh, a sort of a hollow grind here. And if it was made out of steel, of course, that could be also be used uh, as an implement to strike uh, sparks onto charred material. The charred material is probably not charred cloth because cloth at that point was very expensive and the monks did not have any money to buy those things. They could probably uh, use organic material and then char them in a charred tin, uh, which was also, those kind of tins were available to them uh, because all this is happening within the Iron Age. So hey, they have the cutting tool, they have the cordage for their sewing kit, and these cordage could also be used to construct shelters, uh, uh, let's say emergency shelters, temporary shelters that they have to uh, construct in the wild. Uh, they could be used for lashings, uh, all sorts of other different kind of type of accoutrements. They, they're also allotted a belt as well. So the, the eight items traditionally that you've seen are the, like the water filter, right? So the, you have the, let's, let's start with the two robes. The two robes, you have the water filter, you have the razor blade or the knife, you have the uh, sewing kit, which is the thread, uh, and, and uh, needles and thread. You have the containers, you have the belt. Uh, I, I guess, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the needles and thread would be one. So the, uh, needles and thread would be two different elements. And so that would eight, add up to eight items. Um, and within those eight items, if you include a flint and steel kit, which we know historically also was carried, um, although that's not allotted to them in the traditional prescriptions of the monk, of the essentials, or, or what, is, what is allowed for monks to carry, uh, we know that historically they did carry the flint and steel. So again, we see that not only in different civilizations um, throughout the world that the five C's are applicable and that systemic typology is applicable uh, to those cultures, but also in, in the monk traditions uh, and also the, um, uh, uh, the ascetic traditions, we see that those five C's, the basic accoutrements of survival, were carried. Again, we see the power of the, uh, the, the typology that Dave um, was able to discover, um, or at least outline, uh, and of course he's very humble, he's the first one to say that he didn't invent it, but he, he categorized it in that very easy to uh, uh, remember and understand five C's uh, system. And of course that system then is not only applied to the Vikings, as some other uh, uh, um, people in the bushcraft community had done, but also uh, is also applicable to <laughs> to people who who maybe we would least expect, you know, Buddhist monks who are usually pacifists and who are usually uh, uh, not uh, hunting or doing those kind of bushcraft, uh, bushcraft activities. However, their main items that they can carry uh, almost all revolve around uh, the five C's, especially if you include the historical evidence of the carrying of flint and steel. <clears throat> so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I found it to be a great and interesting, fascinating study to do. Um, uh, I'd like to do more of this on this genre uh, and just explore the historical, archaeological um, evidence of different types of um, ancient characters and, and, uh, and, 
explore the five C's uh, uh, with them, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, with you all. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video. This is uh, Sean from Save Monk Outdoors. Um, and uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, <clears throat> and once again, uh, God bless, get outdoors, and get blessed, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.